Hi, I'm Prof. Johnny. Welcome to Goodwill Training and Assessment Center Incorporated. May kasabihan tayo na sa Diyos ang awa na sa tao ang gawa. So ano pa hinihintay natin? Tara na at gawa na tayo! The focal point of my demonstration is about taper turning. As a review, tapers are widely used in the mechanical trades to quickly and accurately align mating parts. Common examples of tapers in use are the shank of plate centers, drill chuck, spindle on machines, and wheel axles on automobiles. Most revolving spindles on machine tools have a taper hole to hold accessories or cutting tools. The drill chuck can be quickly positioned and its accuracy is maintained. Yet all you have to do to remove it is a slight tap. Every machinist should know how to machine and fit tapers to suit the variety of uses they have in machine shop. There are three basic methods to turn a taper in a lathe. By offsetting the tail stock, by setting the compound rest, and by means of a taper attachment. The method used to machine any taper will depend on the length of the taper, the angle of the taper, how the work is held in the lathe, and the number of pieces to be cut. The first method that I'm going to perform today is the compound rest method, which is the most commonly used among the three. And I want to make a number four more taper, just like the shank of this lathe center, which is classified as one of the self-holding tapers. Here are the steps used to cut a taper using the compound dress method. The first is check the print of the angle of the taper in the grease. Mars taper number four which has taper per foot of 0.6233 of an inch and a large diameter of 1.231 inch and a small diameter of 1.020 inch and taper length of 4 and 1 16 inches. Here are the things you have to check on the drawing. If the included angle is given, then set the compound rest to one half the included angle. If the angle is given on one side only, set the compound rest to that angle. However, if the angle on the drawing is not given in degrees, calculate the compound rest setting as follows. Tan one half angle is equal to taper per foot divided by 24 or taper per inch divided by 12. Or you may use this simplified formula. Tan angle is equal to taper per foot times 2 degrees and 33 minutes. So, tan angle of 0.6233 of an inch times 2 degrees and 33 minutes is equal to 1 degree and 35 minutes or 1.5 degrees. Next step, loosen the compound rest lock nuts. Let's loosen the compound rest lock nut. Yeah. Then next, swivel the compound rest to the required angle. Now, in what direction should the compound rest be swiveled? I will swivel the compound rest counterclockwise because the small diameter of the part to be turned is on the right side end. So, I will now set the compound rest to 1.5 degrees. Okay. Tingnan nyo itong graduated line on top of the cross slide from 0 to 45 degrees. And here is the indexing line on 
the compound rest. So, ito yung reference natin at itatapat natin between the first and second graduations on the cross slide top face. Okay? Yan, one graduation. Then, kalahati. Kalahati. Yan, okay? Or, you can also use a steel protractor which is set to 1.5 degrees to check the angle of the compound rest. Okay? Ito, check na din. Yan, naka-flat sa side na yan. Then, yan, dapat mag-fit tayo dyan. So, walang gap. So, exacto, 1.5 degrees. Then, next step, I tend the compound rest lock nuts using only two finger pull on the wrench to avoid stripping the thread on the compound rest studs. Then, next step, set the tool bit on center and position the tool post 90 degrees to the compound rest. Then, lock. Now, again, I would like to remind you that in taper turning, when the tool bit is below the center line of the workpiece, the console face becomes convex form. And when the tool bit is above the center line of the workpiece, the console face becomes concave form. So it is very important that the tool bit is set exactly as high as the center line of the workpiece. Now, the taper length of the Morse taper number 4 is 4 and 1 16 inches. So, I will bring the compound rest slide back 4 one half inches, a little bit longer than the required taper length to allow for clearance. Next, turn the compound rest handle counterclockwise to bring the compound rest slide back far enough for the length of the taper to be cut. And to ensure that the travel of the compound rest slide is longer than the required length of the taper of the workpiece. Okay, next step, bring the tool bit close to the diameter to be cut using the carriage hand wheel and cross feed handle. Yeah. Next step, tighten the carriage lock to prevent movement during the tapering operation. Okay. Then next, cut the taper by turning the compound rest feed screw. Take note, any kind of turning operations that requires two or more cuts, a roughing and a finishing cut should be employed. I will now rough cut the workpiece manually since there is no automatic feed equipped in the compound rest of the late machine. It is very rare for a late machine to have an automatic feed on its compound rest. Okay? So we'll now perform. Now set the RPM. Then, so I will now rough turn the workpiece. Morning, go mana yung depth of cut ko. In roughing cut, a big amount of depth of cut and a high feed rate should be employed since High material removal rate is important in this cup. So finishing cap twenty six point twenty six mm. Take note, 
for finishing cut, try to maintain a uniform manual feed rate in order to obtain a good surface finish. Just like what I'm doing right now. Don't stop the feed while turning is in process for the tool bit will leave a mark around the workpiece. Okay, so the finishing cut is done. For the last step, check the taper for size and angle. So we will now check the workpiece for the large diameter, which is 1.231 of an inch or 31.27 millimeter. Okay, so 31.25, 26, 27 mm. And for the small diameter, which is 1.02 of an inch or equivalent to 25.9 mm. This is the small diameter. Okay. Okay, 25.9, exactly. Then for the length of the taper, we is equivalent to 4 and 116 inches. And, okay, so we'll now test the angle of the taper by using a Morse taper number four sleeve. Okay, walang alog, so perfect ang angle natin. Or, another way in checking the angle of the taper is by using that steel protector and okay then let's read the angle okay okay that is 1.5 degrees or I will fit the warp piece on the spindle hole of the tele stock with the same angle of the taper. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Fit na fit. There is no clearance. Okay? Exactly. Perfect. Now, let's have a question and answer portion. Prof. Johnny, paano kung ang maximum length of travel ng compound red slide ay mas maiksi kesa sa required length of the taper? Ganito gawin natin. I-unlock ang carriage and i-reset natin ang compound red slide by moving it towards the right side end of the workpiece. Then, dahan-dahan natin idikit yung nose ng toolbit sa left side of the workpiece or the bigger diameter. Then, ituloy natin ang manual feed hanggang sa required length ng taper. Okay. 
Okay, nakita nyo? Umahaba na yung taper length. So, ganyan ang pagdudugtong natin para matin natin yung required length of the taper. Sakaling hindi umabot yung maximum length of travel ng compound dress sa isang setup. Ayan. Okay. As you can see, humaba na yung length of the taper. So, ganun lang kadali. Then, that is the compound dress method. Okay. Another question. Prof. Johnny, can I cut the workpiece from the left side end towards the tail stack? Okay. If you use a left hand tool bit, then you can do so. But if you use a right hand tool bit, you should cut the workpiece from the right side end towards the head stock and never use it opposite to the direction of cut. Why, Prof. Johnny? It could still cut the workpiece, but it is already an incorrect way. And the purpose of the tool angles already disregarded and becomes useless. Okay? So that's all for today. Please wait for the next tutorial video. I'll be performing the other two methods of taper turning, which are the taper attachment method and the tail stack method.